I fucked up. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another uh, review of House of the Dragon. Uh, today we're talking about season two, episode five, uh, called the Regent. Actually, it's just called Regent. There's no the. Um, either way, though, that's not super important. Uh, so we get into it uh, right after. Uh, Right after the battle at Rook's Rest. Uh, so we pick up with Corliss. Um, we see Corliss at Driftmark uh, to start off the episode. And man, is morning rainies, you know. I mean, that's your wife. So you, you, gotta, you gotta respect him. Uh, and, you know, we know, we know he's, he's sad. And then we move right on over to uh, Rhaenyra. And Rhaenyra is honestly probably taken away harder... Uh, Actually, Corlys is taking it hard, but Rhaenyra is taking it equally as hard because uh, Rhaenyra is was kind of banking on Rhaenys with um, her dragon. So uh, this is definitely um, like it's hurt the Greens. Like the Greens lost their lost a dragon, and to be honest, besides Vagar, the Greens really don't have a whole lot of dragons. Uh, but Vagar is um, enough to make up for the fact that they don't have a lot of dragons. So. I think for the greens, it's kind of a bigger win because you know you couldn't really use um, you know Sunfire uh, should never have kind of like uh, Rhaenyra is uh, struggling with this whole episode. You know Sunfire should have never went out, uh, and Rhaenyra Rhaenyra knows that. Um, Rhaenyra knows she can't go lead the army, uh, but you know Aegon. Uh, some people got to learn their lesson the hard way. Uh, and Aegon definitely had to learn his the hard way. Speaking of, um, after we get Rhaenyra's reaction to uh, Rhaenys dying, we go over to King's Landing and we see them uh, bring. We see Crispin Cole, Sir Crispy McChicken, uh, marching into King's Landing with the head of Maylies. And dude, the whole all of King's Landing is silent. Like nobody in King's Landing is like, yeah, we we got we got Maylies. That's another dragon we don't have to worry about. They're pretty much all freaked out, uh, which, fair enough, you know, if you saw the head of a giant dragon getting marched through your city, uh, you'd probably be freaking out as well. But another thing is, like, um, to them, you know, the dragons are like gods. Like, they, they, I think they say that at some point in the episode, you know, like, they, I didn't know a dragon could die or it's something along those lines. Uh, so, you know, it really shows the weakness to the people of, of House Targaryen. Uh, if, if this dragon can die, every dragon can die. And if every dragon can die... Then what's the point of having the Targaryens rule us? Uh, this civil war is really the cause of the downfall of House Targaryen. I mean, th that's the whole point of the show, House of the Dragon. But you really start to see, like, this This scene is already starting to plant the seeds of just how much it's going to come back to haunt the Targaryens. Uh, and there's another thing being carted through the city along with the head of Maelie's. A very suspicious little cart. Which we come to find out, I think, actually, yeah, they, they go set the cart on the bed. Uh, so the cart uh, was actually carrying the king inside. So while Maylies was being brought in and uh, all the town's attention was brought to that, the king was silently brought in along with the head of Maylies. And another thing, uh, I think they bring this up later in the episode, but Sunfire uh, was apparently looks at, uh, left at Rook's Rest, uh, Crisp, uh, Crispy McChicken said something like a slow. He was slow to die. Um, so they left Sunfire at Rook's Rest, and they brought uh, they brought Aegon back to King's Landing. But he is burned, broken, beaten. I mean, this man is just shy of dead. I mean, he he's alive, but uh, to be honest, he would rather be dead. He would. I I can tell you, he would rather be dead. Um. And the Grand Maester gets to working on him, and it's, they start, like, peeling off his armor. Like, his armor is, like, stuck to his, uh, stuck to his skin because it's all been melted away. And that's another thing, uh, Crispy McChicken talks about. I know, uh, we're skipping ahead kind of with the Crispy McChicken stuff. Uh, but later on when Allison is talking to Crispy McChicken, he's like, you, you, you and this, and this has to do with something else, uh, later on in the episode. So, uh, at some point they, like, actually, okay, let me, let me just go through it. I'll, I'll kind of go through the green stuff first, I guess. Uh, so Allison uh, comes to see Aegon, and you know Aegon, Aegon is in no fit place to uh, to do anything really. 
Uh, this man is going to be bedridden. This man is not going to be doing anything. Definitely not ruling anytime soon. And that is the first question that comes up in the small council as well. What what do we do now? And Allison immediately is like, well, I've I've been ruler before. I know what to do here. Like I I can handle this situation. And everybody else in the room is just like, yeah, you you read this whole situation wrong. Because Aemon is going to be the king. Uh, and they go around the table, and everybody's pretty much like, yeah, we're 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 going with Aemon. Which here's the thing about Aemon. He would be an effective, uh, he is going to lead them well in, in war. Uh, he, he knows what to do. He knows the strategy. Um, like, I, I think he understands the politics. Uh, but Allison understands what the problem with Eamon is. Uh, this man is a fucking, sorry, excuse the language. Um, this man is a psychopath. This guy is insane. He literally set, um... Uh, set his brother on fire and and uh, kill his dragon so he could become uh, the ruler. Uh, which actually, another little scene, I, I know I'm kind of skipping around here, but all these scenes really relate to each other. This is a pretty good episode. Um, but Helena runs across uh, Aemon later on in the episode. She's like, is it, was it worth it? You know, was this chair? Uh, I mean, cause, to be honest, Aemon could have kind of ruled from behind. Um, you know, Aemon didn't have to sit in the chair. But a Aven wanted to sit in the chair, and, and now he's got what he wants. Because in the small council meeting, they all decide to make uh, Aemon the new, uh, I, I guess you would call it uh, Regent. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the name of the episode. So that's where we're getting, he's not the king, because the king is not dead. Um, so Aegon is still technically the king, but Aemon is ruling in his stead. And uh, that that is not good for Alicent. Not good for Rhaenyra, uh, either. I'm not gonna lie. Rhaenyra would be much better off with, uh, Aegon leading, leading the Green's forces. Uh, but, uh, and she's not gonna get that. Uh, so, uh, and before I move on, uh, just a pretty gruesome little scene there with, uh, with Aegon and Alicent. Uh, and dude, the peeling, uh, the peeling his armor off is just, it was just brutal. Um. Oh, and Allison goes and asks Crispy McChicken, but he he uh he doesn't answer her the first time. Uh, the first time Crispy McChicken talks to Allison, he's just like, yeah. yeah. He, he, his grace fought valiantly. He fought valiantly. He fought nobly. He died. Except he didn't die. Uh, anyways, next up we go to uh the small council, and Rhaenyra's council is questioning every decision she continues to make. Uh, but to be honest, they, they, they're kind of making some good points. Uh, they, this war is not going well. Uh, they've lost Rainies. They, they've lost Maylees the Dragon. Uh, they've lost Rook's Rest. The whole, uh, coast, uh, I, I mean, Dragon, Dragonstone is pretty much cut off from, uh, from King's Landing. And I guess the way they're making it seem, uh, because Jaceris later on in the episode flies up to, uh, the twins, uh, and, and meets the phrase. So I'm guessing they can still uh, get around uh, by by going flying north, but uh, they're they're not gonna be able to fly through uh, just King's Landing without uh, being noticed or or the Crown lands. Uh, next up, what what happened next? Uh, Jaceris goes and talks to uh, Bela, and uh, Jaceris is like, "Well, I'm I'm trying to get something done. I, no, nothing is going well. Let's 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 get something moving. I'm gonna go up to the twins and get uh, these Northermen a safe passage down to." Uh, or a quicker passage down uh, to the Riverlands. And he's going to tell Bela, and he's like, Bela, I'm frustrated. I just want to go help. You know, you're you're able to go, you, you know, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra sends you out all the time. I'm, I'm just trapped here in the castle. And uh, speaking of, like, this scene leads into another scene as well, because there's another scene where um, Rhaenyra is talking to uh, Jaceris once he uh, once he gets back from, uh, 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 once he gets back from the Riverlands. And, uh, Rainier's like, do you not think I don't want to go out and and fight my own war? Um, like you're you're being restrained, like just like I'm having to restrain myself. Because when you're the ruler, when you're the person in charge, when your safety is um, when it's your safety on the line, um, that that it would hold the realm together. You can't just you can't just march out into war. You can't just because that's what happens with Aegon. Aegon marched out to war. He got burned alive and. And now, uh, and the man's not going to be ruling. Uh, he's still alive, but he's in, in name only. 
Uh, it, it is going to be Eamon running the show. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Jaceris is frustrated just like uh, Rhaenyra is, but Jaceris does go off. Uh, he does go off without uh, Rhaenyra's leave off to the twins. Uh, but before we get there, we go to we cut to Damon in uh, in the Riverlands. He is trying to get this whole Bracken and Blackwood situation sorted out. And this man, Damon just cannot, cannot do anything right. This man, whatever he does, I feel for Damon. Everything he does, it all, it always goes wrong, no matter what happens. Uh, so Damon, which, I mean, Damon was not being a good guy here. This man was setting up, this man was plotting. But when he was telling the, the Blackwood guys, uh, basically, hey, I need you to go, uh, commit war crimes, but don't do it under the Targaryen name. Like just go do some war crimes, but you know, make it make it seem like you're you're the one doing the, the war crimes, um, and that that'll get the Brackens to come around. That that was that was Damon's whole idea. Also, Damon has still uh, got this whole haunted house thing going on. I've been seeing a bunch of memes about him being in like a, a horror uh, series while everybody else is in Game of Thrones, um, but he is very much in a different kind of show uh, while also going through the same thing. But he, he is, he is on his own wave now. This man has declared himself. He's, he's talking to the guy uh, who's the leader of Heron Hall. And he's like, Oh, well stop calling me uh, your grace. I think you should stop, start calling me uh, your, my King. And he's like, well, King consort. And he's like, nah, that, that concert, that consort part isn't really necessary. Um, but Damon just wants he he switched he switched his uh, objectives. He is not helping Rainier anymore. This man has decided he is going to rule his own kingdom from the Riverlands, and uh, that he will march on King's Landing. He will take King's Landing, and then if Rainier, wa Rainier wants to come join him uh, afterwards, she can do that. But I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it seems like uh, Damon's plans are falling apart right before his very eyes. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna skip forward to kind of kind of towards the end yet now, but. Uh, the Brackens end up coming back because uh, I, I don't think there's another scene uh, between these guys. Uh, so the Brackens end up coming back uh, after after the Blackwoods have uh, attacked them. And they, they show up at Heron Hall in the middle of the night. And Damon's like, he, he gets woken up from his uh, dream where he's banging his mom. Um, I, I don't know really what's going on with that. I think it's the Three-Eyed Raven uh, is probably the one who's sending uh, all these visions. And this Alice girl probably works with the Three-Eyed Raven. I don't know if this Alice girl's even there. She's probably not even really there. Uh, most of this is going on inside his head. I, I don't know, like, what percent is going on inside his head, but, like, uh, most of this is going on in his head. But it is real. I don't... It's not... It's not like a vision... It, it's not like a vision, if that makes sense. Like, it's... It's like the Three-Eyed Raven is sending hit... He, he's downloading something from the inner, from the Werewood Net. And uh, that, that's what he's getting, I'm pretty sure. Um, but all that aside, uh, the Brackens come back and they're like, "Yo, Damon, you kind of you kind of committed a bunch of war crimes uh, on us Brackens, and we're really not cool with that. So um, we we'd rather die than live under a tyrant." Uh, so Damon has not inspired any any loyal followers. Uh, he's got the Blackwoods to commit war crimes, and the Brackens are pissed off at him now. Uh, he still has Heron Hall, and the man's really not accomplishing much. Uh, if he is working for Rainier and he's doing a ter terrible job, he's trying to make himself a king, he's doing a terrible job. So, uh, but he's clearly not thinking straight, too, because another thing that keeps happening with Damon is he keeps, like, waking up in the middle of these meetings. So, like, it's happened, like, I think three, two or three episodes now, uh, where, well, he'll, he'll wake up and they'll just be in the middle, of, like, somebody's already talking to him and he's like, I'm, I'm disoriented, I have no idea what's going on. Um, so this Alice girl, she has something to do, uh, and one of the characters actually brought, brought it up, one of the Bracken characters, uh, is like, uh, you know, this, the Riverlands has been watched by the old gods and the new, uh, it's, it, we, we are not afraid of you, we're not worried about you, you might bring a dragon, you might murder us all, guess what, Riverlands have been through that before, <laughs> we get murdered all the time, uh, there's a war, we're, we're the first up. But uh, da Damon, uh, it does not work out for him. It does not work out for him. They they turn on him. Uh, so let's let's get back to uh, let's get back to uh, the the timeline. Um, so Raina, Raina is we we get back to Raina and she is up in the Erie, and she is talking to Jane Aaron, 
And Jane Aaron is pissed that she got <laughs> two tiny dragons. Which I don't know what Rainier was thinking. Uh, like, Rainier had to know when she was sending those two dragons like that. And Jane is not going to take this well. And, you know, and Raina tries to, like, sell it. You know, you got two dragons. They're, they're small now, but they'll get bigger. And Jane's just like, are you, are you really trying to bullshit me right now? Like, you're... I'm your host. You're you're gonna have to be sticking with me. I, I'm providing you safety right now. You were supposed to provide me with dragons so I could feel even more secure. Uh, you don't come with that, and then you want to sit here and uh, like try to be annoying. <laughs> Eat. You want to spin this situation? Like, no, nah, that's not gonna fly. So Reyna makes pretty much no progress with Jane Aaron. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Just gets absolutely nothing out of her. Uh, but she, I don't, I don't think she's going to be sending her troops anywhere, uh, anytime soon either. Rhaenyra is going to have to go, uh, go get Jane Aaron off her ass. Uh, because I, I don't think Rhaena is going to be able to handle the situation. And speaking of Rhaenyra, we go back to her, and she's actually talking to Masaria. And Masaria is pretty much the only person Rhaenyra can talk to on, like, a person-to-person like -person level. And even then, like, you know, Rhaenyra and Masaria are not, like, friends, uh, but of all the people I feel like Rhaenyra talks to, I guess maybe Jaceris. Uh she kinda she kinda opens up to uh a lot with that. I mean that's her child, but she she also doesn't like talk about her problems uh that, that much with uh Jaceris. Um whereas Masaria, she's she's kinda leaning on a, a little bit more. Uh but Masaria, she she's like, you know, I wanna one, uh the the what I'm doing has never been done. Uh, what, what Rhaenyra is trying to accomplish has never been done. And I think Masari is trying to tell her, well, you know, if you're trying to accomplish something that's never been done before, you might need to do it in a way that's never been done before. Because um, Masari seems to be giving her a little, some kind of plot. I don't know what that plot may be, but she seems to be giving Rhaenyra some kind of strategy, which, which they don't reveal. And speaking of things they don't reveal, we've got another thing they don't really reveal. Uh, which I guess uh, Rhaenyra and Masaria send somebody out, uh, somebody in a, in, a, in a red dress out. Uh, I, I don't know where she's headed. Uh, but next up, we've got uh, Bela talking to Rhaenyra. And Bela hand, uh, Rhaenyra hands Bela some kind of box with something in it. I have no idea what's in the box, uh, which Rhaenyra has Bela go take it to uh, Corliss and... Uh, and Corliss never opens it this episode, so I, I'm sure we'll find out what's in the box uh, in, a, in a couple episodes. Um, but Bela is talking to Rhaenyra, and Bela's like, or Rhaenyra's like, I need your help. Like, I need to, I need to lean on you. I need to lean on uh, Corliss Valerian. I, I need you guys. She, she can't do it alone. And Bela is like, I mean, I'll give it to Bela. She just straight up's like, I, you know, I'm in. I'm in. I, wh whatever we need to do, I I'm ready to do. And so she goes and takes word down to Corliss. And when Bela goes and meets Corliss, she actually... Um, so Bela and Corliss... Ba Bela kind of shows up in the middle of the night. She's looking for Corliss. She finds him out by the docks. And she basically ends up telling him, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra needs you to be the hand. And Corliss is like, bro, she took my wife. Uh, she, she's taking everything. She, she's taking everything away from me. Why on earth would I continue to help her? And Bela basically says, cause that's what, that's what Rainies would want. Uh, and that's, that's what you should do. You should, are you going to go join the Greens? No. Um, so, you know, you can, obviously Corliss is, is upset about the whole situation, but like at some point you just, you got to deal with the situation and move on. And the thing is, Corliss, you're team black. So you're either going to be this hand of the king or, or hand of the queen, or you're... I might as well start sailing over to Essos, because uh, there ain't nowhere for you here. Uh, but another thing that Bela talks about uh, with Corliss, which is, is really important. Um, Corliss is like, I'm going to name you uh, the heir to Driftmark, Bela. Uh, but Bela says, uh, you can't name me heir, because I'm fire and blood. And, and Driftmark needs salt and sea. So this is going to continue on to the uh, the, the Allen storyline. I'm sure uh, I'll set up more with uh, him potentially becoming the uh, heir to Drift Mark. Uh, but we've learned that Bela is uh, Team Rainier. She is Team Black all the way, and we, we do not have to worry about our girl Bela turning. 
Uh, oh, next up, I, I missed this scene with Damon. Uh, this is probably going to be the last time we're talking about Damon, but uh, Damon has this uh, one of his visions this episode i we see him like sleeping with a girl and like uh, we've never seen this girl before for all like who is it and apparently it's his mom uh, it, it gets revealed by the end of the vision that it, it is his mom um and later on in the episode uh that girl alice is actually asking damon you know when wouldn't you like to meet your mom or something like that so there is there is something going on here um and I know we were kind of already moving past Damon, but I just need to do uh talk about that vision real quick. Uh, okay, what do we got up next? The small council meeting where they name uh Eamon as regent. Yeah, okay, we already we already got about we already pretty much talked about that. But uh, Aegon or Eamon, as soon as he becomes regent, as uh, basically starts listing out orders, uh, take down the rat catchers, um. I think go reinforce Rook's rest. Uh, get ready to march on here and hauling. You know this man. This man is given marching orders as soon as he becomes uh, the regent. Uh, not not surprising. I mean, uh, Amons has always been one who is. I mean, other than his uh, psychopathic tendencies, uh, this man would be a great king. He he is ruthlessly efficient. Um, uh, friggin' Tywin would love him. Tywin would love him. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, next up, we've got. Uh, next up, they're showing the uh, blacksmith, and I kind of think this is where they're going with the whole. Uh, you know, Masari was talking to Rain Rainier about uh, using the small folk, uh, and I think we're we're kind of going to see how uh, with this blacksmith. So the blacksmith uh, has not been paid by Aegon. Uh, Aegon said he was going to get him paid, and it, it never actually ended up happening. And now Aegon much uh out of the game um as far as uh being in power is, is concerned uh so so i'm not gonna lie i doubt this man gets gets his payment uh and that's exactly what his wife's telling him like yeah you know you're you're gonna be hoping you're gonna be waiting uh you know maybe when you get that payment you'll be you'll be feeding our our dead bodies uh so the wife convinces the blacksmiths to uh, head out, uh, and they're they're going to leave King's Landing. But as they go to leave King's Landing, uh, they bar the gates and, and they lock everyone inside. So no one is allowed to leave King's Landing. Um, they they are stuck. There is apparently not enough food because everybody there was chanting for meat. And uh, the blacksmith's daughter's sick, so th this man needs to get her help, and it does not seem like it's coming from within. Uh, which makes me think I'm pretty sure Masaria's. Uh, plan is to actually maybe send food to the people in King's Landing, like in the name of Rhaenyra. Uh, something all, along those lines. Uh, she's definitely going to try to like help out the people at King's Landing in hopes that they'll they'll turn on uh, on Aemon One-Eye. Which, oh, another thing, uh, David did talk about uh, how Aemon One-Eye will uh, pretty much bring the end into the realm. Uh, I gotta, I can't lie, I gotta, I gotta agree Aemon is not gonna be good for uh, not gonna be good for the realm. Uh, but anyways, next up we go to Allison talking to uh, Chris, uh, Sir Crispy McChicken. And uh, Allison's basically just complaining, like, hey, uh, what the hell? What? Why are you... One, why are you coming to my room in the middle of the night trying to have sex with me? But two, whenever I try to talk to you during the day, you just completely ignore me. Uh, and that's because Sir Crispy McChicken is... I, I'm sure Sir Crispy McChicken is actually going through it right now. This, this man mentally... Uh, made Aegon King, got Aegon murdered within weeks. I mean, not murdered, but I mean, he's doing a terrible job as uh, as a king's guard. He might be doing okay as a hand of the king, but even then, no, he's really not doing good as a hand of the king either. Uh, they are winning the war, uh, but it is it is mainly because Rhaenyra's forces are divided and not really on the same sides. I mean, if, if Daemon would have been there last episode, I mean... Rainey's and Damon could easily take out Vagar, I'm imagining. Uh, now, obviously, you can't do that anymore, uh, but if Damon would have been there, uh, that, that could have been a whole different story. Although, I don't think Eamon... I think if Damon was in play, Eamon uh, probably wouldn't have done what he what he did. Uh, either way, though, not, not important. That's how much uh, stuff that could have happened. Um, uh, but anyways, uh, the, the main thing they're talking about... Uh, Allison and Sir Crispy McChicken is uh, why Allison why, why 
Kristen, uh, sorry, Chris Chicken Chicken is not siding with Allison. And he's like, listen, straight up, you, you can't do this. So what, what we are asking you to, uh, the decisions we are going to be asking you to make, you can't, you can't handle this. Uh, the war that I saw, what, what I saw at Rook's Arrest, it, it is worse than anything, than anything that you're going to imagine. Uh, yeah, there, to lead us, we need a dragon rider. Is basically what he said. Uh, we we need a dragon rider who can deal with the the horrors of this situation because that's what it is. Uh, it's going to be a horrific situation. This is not like war. This is not no noble fights and battles. This is people burning to death and people dying in mass. And there's really no winning when when a, dra a dragon is in the air. You just have to hope that the dragon on your side manages to pull out the win. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. Crispy McChicken does not reveal, uh, that Aemon pretty much murders Aegon. Although Helena already knows. Uh, but Helena probably won't be sharing that information with anybody else. Although Aemon, I'm sure, probably wants to marry Helena, uh, knowing him. But anyway, let's move on. Jaceros goes up and meets the phrase, like I was kind of talking about earlier. Of, uh, Jaceros flying around, uh, Rook's Rest. So he goes with the there to meet the phrase, and I wish this man would just burn this whole bridge and the phrase down like right now to save us a lot of a lot of heartache from Game of Thrones. But unfortunately, that that's not going to happen. But he does meet with the phrase, and he is able to uh, parlay a deal, which is actually pretty surprising. Uh, you know, we we all knew once he's going to meet the phrase, well, they're going to be assholes, <laughs> and, and they were, but they honestly weren't bad. They they certainly weren't on Walder's level, but you know. Walder didn't seem so bad the first time you met him either. I mean, he didn't seem like a, a good guy, but these these people don't seem as horrible uh, as their great 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 grandson. Um, but they make a deal. They essentially want Heron Hall. Uh, they essentially want Heron Hall, and they'll allow the North to pass through, and they will uh, they will pledge themselves to Rhaenyra. Uh. But the only thing they're worried about is one little problem, one tiny little thing, a little dragon named Vagar. Uh, but Jaceros brings up a good point. Um, well, do you want do you want to worry about Vagar, or do you want to worry about my dragon that's right over here? Uh, and that's a pretty convincing argument. I, I imagine that would sway most people. Uh, and it definitely seems to have worked here on the phrase, because they're like, yeah, but we'll, we'll take Heron Hall at the end of the war, and we will uh, we'll, we'll be happy with that. So, what what do we got up after that? Uh, Jaceros flies back to uh, King, uh to uh, Dragonstone. Let's Rhaenyra know uh that that the Freys have uh, joined the fold. Uh, and that's when Ra Rhaenyra and Jaceros uh talk about uh how limited you know they are in their own actions. Uh. Okay, what have I missed? Oh, yes, Rhaenyra sends... Oh my gosh, I don't remember the Lord's name. But she sends this, uh... This real jerk out uh, to go treat with Damon. And I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's it's the dude on that small council that is just constantly talking shit. Um, I, I honestly can't remember the, uh, his name uh, for the life of me. Uh, but Rhaenyra uh, basically tells him, hey, uh, so me and Damon were kind of on bad terms. I would send a note, but he doesn't He doesn't always respond to my notes. Um, and I don't want to go talk to him myself because we had a pretty bad uh, convo last time we talked. We're, we're kind of on rocky terms relationship-wise. So if you could just go be like the mediator for our relationship, uh, it would be really fantastic. <laughs> so this poor guy can sit off to go deal with Damon. And for the life of me, I would I would hate to be this guy because um, chances are Damon murders him. Uh, even if Damon doesn't murder him, he's having to travel through the Crownlands, uh, the Riverlands, and they're about to be war torn countries. I mean, the Crownlands are already getting destroyed, uh, but the Riverlands are very much up next. We we know the history of Westeros, and if if there's a war, that means the Riverlands are getting destroyed. So I, I just pray for the best of luck to this man. I, I hope you make it back safe. Knowing Game of Thrones, you're not going to, though. And we end off the episode 
Wait, no, we don't end off the episode with uh, the conversation with the Brackens, although uh, the Brackens do show up next. And then we go to Corliss. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. We did find out what was in the box. I must look down while I was watching the episode. Uh, so Corliss uh, opens the box at the end of the episode. Uh, I guess I just completely looked down and missed that part. Uh, opens up the uh, the box to find the Hand of the King pendant. Uh, so he has accepted, I guess, uh, the role of being Hand of the King. And let me tell you, Rhaenyra needs him. She, she needs somebody to come put her small council in line. Uh, then we see, that's, that's when we get the scene of Aemon looking at the throne and Helena asking him, you know, is it all worth it? And then we cut over to Aegon. Aegon's still in bed, just freaking melted. Uh, and Allison was watching over him, and as Allison walks out of the room, you hear, uh, Aegon cry, Aegon say, uh, mummy. And, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it'd be really easy to make fun of Aegon right here, but to be honest, that man is in, uh, th that man, <laughs> I got all the sympathy in the world for a Aegon right now. Um, but he says mommy as she leaves, but, uh, Allison doesn't hear, she walks away. And that's when we get, when we get the scene between Jaceres and, uh, and Rhaenyra, where Rhaenyra has to tell him, you know, we gotta rein it in, because that's just the way it is. Uh, I would I would love to uh, go out and ride on Dragonback, uh, but then Jaceres has an idea. And to be honest, Jaceres' idea is a very dangerous idea. Because he proposes to Rhaenyra that they give dragons to other potential Targaryens. You know, uh, Targaryens have a lot of bastards out there. They've got a lot of... They've been married off to a lot of families. There are a lot of non-Targaryen Targaryens around Westeros. So, Jaceres proposes... proposes uh, Rhaenyra finds those uh, Targaryens, or unnamed Targaryens, and, you know, maybe just gives them a dragon or two. Because, uh, you know, if we could get those dragons uh, on Team Black, well, the Team Green screwed. I mean, I mean, once we have like four, I, we'll have like five dragons at that point. Five fighting sized dragons. Uh, even with Vagar, they, they Vagar couldn't stand against that. And say Damon wants to uh, wants to go to war uh, with Rith Rainier. He, well, they, he can't stop four dragons either. Uh, but granted, uh, one of those dragons is Rainier's, um, and one is Jaceres's. So those are, those two are pretty much off limits from uh, fighting. One is Bela's. Uh, that one is is good to go, but it is not a match for Vagar or Caraxes. And the other two, um, they don't show it at the end of the episode, but in the next episode previews, they show one of the dragons. And that thing looked pretty huge. So I think it'll be the biggest dragon besides Vagar, maybe. I might be smaller than Caraxes. It's probably bigger than uh, it's probably bigger than Rhaenyra's dragon, though. Uh, I don't know though. Well, what it, it doesn't particularly matter uh, too much at this moment. We will find out more about those dragons under the basement because that is apparently what next episode is going to be all about. But Jasteris looks real uh, pleased with himself uh, about the idea, but I can't can't help but think that this is going to be an awful idea. Uh, but that's pretty much where that episode uh, wraps up with Rhaenyra and uh, Jace cooking up a, a plot to use the rest of these dragons they've got under Dragonstone. And as far as the episode goes, uh, it took a long time. I mean, I just, uh, it was a long recap. Uh, but a lot happened this episode. This was probably the most packed episode, like, story-wise. We, we really were moving moving the uh, storyline story line along. Um We've set up that Aemon is now in power in King's Landing. Rhaenyra is... She has got Corlys uh, in the fold. We are getting our, our soldiers in line. Uh, you know, the Black's forces are ramping up. And Damon has declared basically for himself as far as he's concerned. Although Rhaenyra is not aware of that yet. Um, so we're seeing where all these pieces are, are moving to. And... Tells me they're about to all come crashing together very, very soon. I don't think we're going to get 
I think by the time season two is over, uh, we'll have a lot of major changes. Uh, I'm not sure which part of the story we're going to get to by the end of season two. There's one part that I think we might get to, but maybe not. Um, if if you if you've read Fire and Blood, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if we'll get there by the end of this season, uh, but if we do get there, it'll be just as crazy as the Rook's Rest episode. Uh, which, if they put Rook's Rest here instead of, like, towards the end of the season, which I know if they put it towards the end of the season, it would be really dragging it out, but, you know, that's a huge moment. And the next moment that's probably that big is, is the thing I'm talking about. So, I, I could see them ending season two with that, uh, and I think that would be a pretty, pretty cool, a pretty cool ending. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, overall, though, I thought that this episode was pretty good. We, we moved everything along. It definitely was not exciting as the end of the last episode. You know, no crazy battles. Uh, but we're, we're setting up uh, we're setting up the story moving forward. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces here. As far as characters, uh, Allison kind of stood out to me in this episode, to be to be real. Uh, there was a scene with Allison where she, uh, where she it's the small council scene where, where they're all talking. And it's like the world is, like, closing in on Allison. Like, you know, you. she just has no control. She, ha she has no power here. Uh, and I think it's really settling in uh, just just how powerless she is. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think uh, Allison was probably the same. Damon, uh, Damon was also pretty good this episode. Um, Ray Rhaenyra didn't do a whole lot. I like Jaceris this episode. Jaceris is starting to grow on me. Uh, Jaceris and uh, Aemond, I think, are really starting starting to step up. Um, which, obviously, Aemond is. I mean, Aemond has taken down three dragons so far uh, in the war. So, this man... I mean, one of them was on his own team, but <laughs> but he's taken down three dragons. So, uh, Aemond is definitely uh, the man with the biggest bounty on his head. But... Uh, Jaceris, uh, I, I've liked his stuff. I've liked Bela's stuff. Uh, I'm curious to see what Reyna's gonna have going on in the Eerie. Uh, the Eerie is always a weird place, so uh, we'll, we'll see what's happening up there. Uh, but I'm mainly, mainly excited to see, uh, where, where our next moves of the war takes us. And, uh, I, I guess we'll see how, uh, these new dragon riders might, might pan out next episode. Um, oh, sorry if I... Might might be a possible spoiler, uh, but I mean they 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 showed it in the uh, next episode previews, so I can't imagine you're watching this without watching uh, all all the next episode previews. Uh, but thank you guys all for watching. Uh, this is pretty much gonna be the, the end of this uh, episode review. Um, I thought it was a pretty great episode. It was not. I mean, as far as like if we're talking like levels, um, B is a notch down from Game of Thrones. It's like a, it's probably like a couple notches down. Uh, but season two has been way stronger than season one. Season one and season two are both way stronger than season eight and season seven of Game of Thrones. I don't know if I'd say they're as good as season six. Uh, season six still is mostly good. Um, but but they're they're good. This is a great addition to uh, the Game of Thrones universe. I I haven't been digging it. Uh, I wish they would stop talking about the princess that was promised so much because we all know that's not going to go anywhere. But uh, other than that, it's it's been fantastic. I love uh, the Dance of Dragons story. So uh, having it having it all done like this is is freaking awesome. It, it's way better than going and reading uh, Fire and Blood. Uh, although Fire and Blood's cool, you should still go read Fire and Blood, especially the Dance of the Dragons portion of Fire and Blood. Uh, but the show has been fantastic and. I uh, can't wait. We're halfway through the season now, so um, you know I want to hear y'all's predictions. Uh, you guys, I, I don't know if you want to do spoilers in the comments. Uh, I don't really care if you do spoilers in the comments. So uh, if you go down to the comments, uh, just know there there could be spoilers. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, where you think we're headed this season? I already know all the spoilers, so you can't spoil me. Uh, but uh, people down in the comments, uh, I have no idea whether they they've been spoiled or not. So. Uh, feel, feel free to talk about it, uh, as much as you want. I hope, I, I hope we finish out this season pretty strong. Uh, I think we're going to, though. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted here and rambling now. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, if you're watching, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for making it all, all the way through. And we will catch you next week for season two, episode six. Uh, hopefully it'll be crazy, as crazy as last episode, or, you know, if not, uh, if we're not doing a big battle episode, well, hopefully that'll just move the story along like this episode did. Um, and I think, uh, it's been a pretty good season so far, so uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, thank you guys all for watching.